He's one of the most respected life and business strategists in the world and has transformed the lives of some of the most powerful people in our society. Today, he's sharing his lessons of success with you. Joining me now, my friend Tony Robbins. You forged you, a remarkable career, influenced people at every level, uh, and I appreciate all the philanthropic work that you do. And a lot of it came from your ability to drive change. What is it that prevents people from doing the things they already want to do in life? The most basic answer, I'm sorry it's so simple, but it's true, it's fear. You know, people make it this complex process. This woman was told me that I don't understand why they don't do this, why I feel this way. I said, it's called fear. Everybody's afraid we're not enough. Everybody's afraid we're not rich enough, smart enough, young enough, quick enough, fast enough. It's human nature. But the secret is to do it anyway. I know that sounds so simplistic. My work when I'm working with somebody is showing them how to condition themselves, like building a muscle, so that you take action first automatically. Because if you don't do that, it's hard. You lose momentum. It's like, how do I get started? Where do I go? And I tell people, throw a rock, wherever it drops, start there. The next person walks by, I go, you're the first person after the rock. Do anything <laughs> to start the process of moving forward rather than let fear stop you. Emotions are a big part of this. And you spend a lot of time, because I've done your seminars, uh, focusing on that. And you bring it down to focus, right? Language and intent. That's right. Walk us through those a little bit. Help us understand tactically what we do to make the change that we want in our lives happen. Well, if somebody is, we were mentioning earlier, if somebody is really stressed out, they're not stressed out for no reason. It's because they're focusing on something that makes them feel stressed. They often, when they're focusing on it, it changes the body. You start to feel tight. You start to feel a certain way. And then they use language like, I don't know what to do. Why am I so overwhelmed? So three things control how you feel every moment. What you focus on, what you do with your body. If your shoulders are down, if you're breathing like, ah, it's not hard to figure out. You're not gonna be in a very resourceful state. If I take that same person and I change their body radically, I get them to talk at a different tempo, I get them to move their body differently. I've taught this for, what, 41 years. Three years ago at Harvard, they did a study on power postures where they showed that if you stand like this with your hands on your hips like Superman or Wonder Woman, or if you lean back like this, like the guy is obnoxious at the office and do this, right, right. it literally changes your testosterone by 25% within two minutes. It reduces cortisol, which you know is the stress hormone, right. by 30%, and you're 33% more likely to take an action. So if we change what we focus on, if we change the way we use our body, if we change our language patterns, we'll instantly feel different. Think it's how do people use their body when they're worried versus when they're excited? Yeah. If you learn to use your body first, use your focus first, you can literally change how you feel in moments and then you develop new habits where you start to feel good all the time and it isn't some phony fake pump up. It's literally the way you've conditioned your body. Just like being fit as an athlete, you wanna be emotionally fit. You often say that where, where your focus goes, energy flows. Yes. Because it just takes you in that right place. Then the intent part sneaks in there. Is, is the intent because you've got to pick what you want to do or just do something and you'll figure it out as you go? You need to be clear what it is you really want. I always tell people, you know, know not only what you want, but why you want it. I know this is simplistic, but most people just don't do the blocking and tackling of their life. Uh, the one we were talking to earlier, a great lady, and you could just see she wants to have a new business, but she never sat down to even put a plan together and says, why aren't I taking action? Well, when you're not sure what you're gonna do, you're gonna hesitate, and hesitation kills momentum. And momentum is what makes a, a sports team win, it's what makes an athlete, a business person win. When you get momentum, it's like, it takes enormous energy to get a rocket out of our, you know, our gravitational pull of the Earth. But out of the solar system is easy. Once it has momentum, it takes less fuel, less energy. Starting a relationship, starting a business, changing your body, it takes so much in the beginning. But once you get going, it's actually really easy. You changed my life by teaching me about three paradoxes. Six primal needs that are in, in opposition, so basically three on each side that are in opposition. I'm gonna walk through them with you if you don't mind. Cool. When I first heard you talk about this, it changed all the things that I was struggling with about balance in life. Because I was balancing the wrong things. The first is uncertainty. Right versus uncertainty. Versus better certainty, say, yeah. yeah. Versus uncertainty, or better say, comfort versus variety. Yes. Well, think about it. We all have a need for certainty. We have a need to know we can avoid pain, that we can be comfortable. Some people do that when they're stressed by smoking. Some people work out hard to deal with it. Some people eat to try to get that comfort back. But if you were certain every moment of your life, you knew what people are going to do, when they're going to do it, how they're going to do it, you'd be bored out of your mind. So we also need uncertainty. If you have too much uncertainty, you freak out. If you have too little, you feel bored out of your mind. And you can get uncertainty or variety by a great conversation, by making love, by taking on a new job or a new career, a new opportunity. You get a million ways. The question is, do you meet your needs in ways that are positive or negative? Because yeah. sugar will make you feel good in the moment, but you feel good long term. Smoking a cigarette will make you comfortable and certain, but it might be variety. It changes how you feel when you're stressed, so it meets two needs. That's why it's addictive. It's not sustainable. Oh. That's what makes somebody addicted. Yeah. Second big uh, primal needs to them, connection, right, and versus significance. I want to be the best, 
So I got to be different, but I want to be in, in community with you. I want to be close to you. I want, I want love and I want connection. But see, what, what most people like, you see this in, in great actors or, or great uh, entertainers, they'll come to me and in the beginning, they work so hard to be significant, to be unique, to be special, to be important. What they really wanted was love. But now people stop on the street and they'll say to me, they don't even know who I am. They just want my time, they just want this, they want a picture, they, they don't respect my family, they don't respect it. You'll hear them so upset. What they wanted was the love. But see, we, we can have both. But the more significant I am, the more unique I am, the more separate I am from you. The more yeah. connected I am, then some people go, yeah, but where am I? Where am I special? So the finding that balance between the two is what makes people feel alive. And we can meet all these needs in positive ways or negative ways. You can get significance by tearing other people down. Oh, they don't, they're lucky, they, they don't care, they took advantage of somebody. You don't know anything about them. You see yeah. people do that with famous people all yes. the time. <laughs> Why are they tearing them down? Because if I don't feel good about myself, if I can make you smaller, I look like I'm moving up. But you're not, and it doesn't work. But if you do things where you significantly love someone, if you care for someone, you're the most significant person in life. If you try to prove you're significant, then you have kind of the Trump effect. Even people that like him will say, you know, sometimes he can push people aside because he's telling everybody how special he is. I'm not making a political statement. I'm saying that gets in the way of relationship. If we're gonna connect, we gotta not make ourselves significant. We gotta find out what's significant in the other person and honor it. Then there's the one that really is important, which is growth versus contribution. And this one always caught me off guard because unlike the other ones, you have one, more of one, you get a little less of the other oftentimes. Right. But when I, when I contribute, when I give to you, I actually grow. That's right. Teach me that. Well, the first four needs are the needs of the personality. We all find a way to be certain, even if we have to lie to ourselves or just work hard. We all find variety. We all find significance, even if it's tearing other people down. We all find at least connection, if not love. But the spiritual needs are to grow. When people say, what does it take to be happy? I say one word, progress. If you're not there yet, but you are starting to make some progress in your body, progress on your relationship, or progress on your career, your finances, you're gonna feel good. And when you achieve it, how long do you feel good for? Not very long, because when you achieve it, you stop growing, you kind of celebrate, nothing wrong with that, but how long after you get that thing you wanted are you happy? A week, a month, a year, ne almost never a year. Yeah. It's a short time, and the reason is we're not supposed to just sit there at the table of success and celebrate for years. We need to grow to feel alive. And everything in the universe grows or it dies. But when we grow, we have something to give. And when we give, that, people often say human beings are selfish. I've been selfish, I'm sure you've been at times, but that's not my core and it's not anybody's. And I'll prove it to you. When you're having, all of you at home and all of you here, when you have something great in your life that happens, you learn something, you experience something beautiful, what's the first thing you wanna do? Tell people. Share somebody yeah. what you love, why? Because when you share with it, it expands. See, pleasure is something coming in from the outside. Happiness is something inside you that you share. Ooh. And if you, happiness is what people really want. Pleasure, you can get pleasure from alcohol or sex or anything, but some people, it's all about me. When you're taking what's inside yourself because you've grown and you're giving to someone you love, your children, a friend, a girlfriend, boyfriend, a coworker, anybody, there's an aliveness you can't feel by yourself. There's only so much pleasure you can feel. Happiness and joy comes when that expansion is shared. So what do you feel with Feeding America? This is a gargantuan program yes. Tony has. It's fed tens of millions of Americans. Why is the mission so personal to you? Oh, when I, I, you know, when I was 11 years old, I had no money and no food, and it was Thanksgiving, so it magnified it. And my family wasn't gonna starve, but we weren't gonna have a dinner. And uh, some man showed up at the door with these groceries and an uncooked turkey, and it really, my father was upset by it because he felt it was charity, but I looked at it and said, my God, this is, our family's being supported. You know, this is beautiful, strangers care. It changed my life. And so I promised myself I'd someday do for the same for another family. So at 17, I had no money, but I fed two families and then four and then eight. And then I fed about two million people a year for a decade. Um, two million myself and two million through my foundation, so four million people. And then I was writing Money Master the Game and Unshakable, these financial books, interviewing all these billionaires and Congress cut food stamps. And it's a different term now, right? But they cut it by well, it was a $5.6 billion. And I looked around and said, every family in America that needs help has to give up a week's worth of food every month for this to happen unless you and I jump in. So I, I called my team and said, how many people have I fed total? And they said, 48 million people over my life. I said, what if I fed 50 million people this year? And then I went, what if it was 100 million? They said, what if I fed a billion people? So I fed 400 million people with Feeding America as my partner for the last four years. Yeah, and I'm gonna sure. feed a billion people over the next six years. That deserves applause. A billion meals. Oh my, unbelievable. <laughs> now, you just said something. You started with two, then four, then eight. Change happens often, but it's fleeting. Yes. Yet you speak often of making that change last. How do you do that? How do you make it sustainable so you continue to want that throughout? 
Uh, if you want a breakthrough, not just a little change, you know, you can change laterally. You know, you can go from being pissed off to frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Doesn't help you much, right? But if you really want to change, most people are trying to change. Say you want to lose weight and they want to make money. They go, how do I do it? They look for the strategy. But I'd like all three of you to think of three S's. Strategy is where most people go first. Like, how do I do it? But how hard is it really truly to be fit and have energy? It's not that complex. It's not like reserved for the 1% or expensive to learn. You have to interrupt, you have to hide from the answers to those things. <laughs> the real problem is the second S, story. See, the reason the person is making progress, they may not know what to do. Sometimes that's true. But some don't know what to do and they don't do what they know. Yeah. That's most people. Yes. And so why? They have a story that says it's a set of beliefs they tell themselves over and again. I've tried everything. Or if they're single, all the good ones are gone. You know, right. you know, whatever the story is. And if you tell yourself a story over and over again, you know, Hitler used to say, tell a story big enough, loud enough, long enough, people believe you. Well, we're Hitler to ourselves. We convince ourselves. The thing we really need though is you always come up with a lousy story when you're in a lousy state. Yes. And so the number one thing I show people to do is how to change their emotional state. When you're feeling tired or frustrated, when you learn how to change your body so that you really feel excited and isn't fake, when you learn how to change your biochemistry, which is what I teach people to do. When, for example, when you're, in when, you, when you're upset with someone, do you ever notice how you can now remember everything that they've ever done that ever upset you, right? Yes. <laughs> and when you're in love, when you're totally in love, everybody make the sound of being in love, try it. Uh, oh, oh, it's been a while for some of you, clearly. Right. <laughs> Let's try it again. Out of your mind in love, you can't stop thinking about the person. Make the sound how that feels. Uh, Go for it, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I will work on that. <laughs> but when you're in love, what's wrong with life? What's Nothing. wrong with anything? When you're in love, oh, we have no money. Who cares? We're in love. <laughs> right. So your emotional state controls the story you have about your life, and then your story determines whether you find a strategy, or even if you know the strategy, whether you really do it or not. When people say, I tried, what they're really telling me is I have a story that says I should try this, but it's really not gonna work. So I give it a half reared attempt and it didn't work and now I can tell people I tried. What you really gotta do is learn to change your emotion, your state, change your story, and then you can find the strategy or you can make the strategy to work. How do you get to the core values that are so much of what you speak to? That, that's a place where people figure, well, that, that guy got it from his family. He was taught it throughout his life. Can, no, not in my case. Exactly. <laughs> how, how, how do you even focus in on those values? Where do they come from? Well, I, I'm, I constantly believe you gotta feed your mind and, and challenge your body, because the mind-body works together, you know? What stops people, as we said, is fear. Well, fear is physical. You feel it in your throat, your gut. But if you do something really physically strong on a regular basis, you develop a new emotional habit. And that emotional habit will get you to follow through and do things differently that people won't do. It's really not that complex. There are a few habits in your life that truly could change your whole life. I start every single day with this process called priming, training my brain to be in a peak state. Because we get primed all the time, you know, people are unaware of it, but there was a study that was done not long ago where they took some people, 100 actors, they walked up to 100 people in a park, and they rehearsed doing the same thing every time. They reach in their pocket to get their phone, and they, or they hand the person a cup of coffee, and then they reach in their pocket looking out and say, would you hold this to me for a second to a total stranger? And they grab their phone, look at it, type it, and they take it back. They go, thank you so much. The same for everybody. But then they come back 30 minutes later with somebody with, uh, and the only difference, by the way, is 50% of them have iced coffee, 50% of them have hot coffee. Got it. Now, a person comes by 30 minutes later with a clipboard, gives them $20 and said, if you'll give me literally a minute and a half of your time to read this three paragraph story and answer these two questions, this is yours. 98 chance people take the 20 bucks and do it. They read the story, it's the same story for everybody. But half the people, when they ask them, the main character, how would you describe the qualities of the main character, the character traits? The ones that got iced coffee all say the person was cold and uncaring. 81% say that. Come on. The person that got hot coffee, 80% or 1% difference say the person is warm and genuine. And the only difference is 30 minutes earlier, somebody primed them. See, you think it's your thoughts. Much of your thoughts have been primed by the environment, by the media, by what you read to, by your family, by your friends, by your culture, by your background. So what I do every day is I prime myself for what I want rather than letting the environment control me. Mentors are yes. a big part of the lives of successful people and a lot of folks don't even know where to start looking for them. How do you find the right mentor for you? Well, I think today, you know, I've looked for the best mentors, because today, because of the web, you can follow someone you don't even know. You can link, read what they write, you can read their blogs, you can interact in ways with them. Sometimes you can talk to them or talk back on social media. So we have more choices today on that than ever. But I also try to find, don't have the belief that your mentor has to be perfect. Because none of us are. There's no right. perfect human beings. And even if you are perfect, someone else will turn around and say, you're not perfect That's right. <laughs> from their perspective. Sure. So what you really want to do is just say, let me find two or three people that have answers, that have 
proven it by their life example, not because they can verbalize it. You know, how people's lips move don't matter. How do their feet move for 10 or 20 years? And so I've always looked for people that were not only successful in the exterior world, but they're really happy and that they're contributing to society in a meaningful way because those are the people that are most fulfilled. And so I think today you have to get clear, what do you want? And then go looking and it's not hard to look again because of the world we live in today. Because meanings, uh, or rather our beliefs shape our meaning. A lot of people, especially today when the world seems so divided, start following a certain uh, value system. They start yes. finding meaning in that. Yes. How do they kick the tires on it and make sure they're actually following the right light? My number one favorite question and the time that most people use it is if you're really frustrated or sad or worried or depressed or you think something horrible has happened, my favorite question to ask myself is what else could this mean? And I make myself come up with at least three different meanings because what happens is beliefs become self-fulfilling. Mm -hmm. See, once you believe something, you don't see anything else. I've done this with your audience before. I said, you know, look around the room and find brown, and everybody looks around. And I say, now with your eyes closed, tell me what you saw that was red, and nobody sees much red. And I yeah. say, open your eyes, look for red, and they find more red. Why do you find more red? Because you get what you look for. Your beliefs condition you to find. And then I say, how many saw, I said, you even saw things that weren't there. How many saw beige stuff, called it brown just to feel successful? And they all laugh. You know? right. How many saw burgundy, called it red? They all laugh. And the reason is because once we're after something, we'll even make the color different to feel successful. If you think somebody's mean, you'll find meanness in them if it's not there. If you think somebody's your dear friend and they do something terrible, you'll say, oh, they're having a bad day. So our beliefs control us. So unquestioned beliefs that produce stress, those are the ones you've got to question. And there's a, there's a great lady out, she wrote a book called The Work. Her name is Byron Katie, and she's a dear friend of mine. And she has this four question format that I'd recommend anybody looking at to question your beliefs, because all our pain comes from believing something that makes us stress, rather than saying, hey, there's lots of options. In our country today, we see people on two sides of things. We're all brothers and sisters. We all take any issue, guns, right? People make the other side evil on both sides. Everybody wants our children protected. Everyone wants our, our you know, homes and our churches and our schools to be safe. Let's stop beating each other up and doing that. And that's the only way we'll make progress is find what we do agree on. We might have different ideas of how to do that, but that doesn't make the other person evil. Once you start believing the other person's evil, all you're really doing is feeding your own significance, your own ego. I'm right, you're wrong. And that'll never solve a damn thing. Do you want to be right? Do you want to be in love? That's why I tell intimate relationships, that's right? right? <laughs> you know, it's the same thing in life, right? You often, it's my last question, you say, if you haven't made a decision about what you're gonna do in your life, you have actually made a decision. It was a decision of an action. Yes. Where does that decision take people? Well, I think, um, it, it happens at different stages of life. It's not like you have to have this one mission. A lot of people are, are paralyzed. I don't know my purpose. Well, your purpose is to enjoy your life, to grow and to give. Like, everyone has different ways, but we all compare it sometimes. Is it enough? Is it strong enough? Is it big enough? What I found in my life is do what's in front of you with all your vigor, all your passion. Give the most you can. Focus on giving, not trying to receive, and you'll receive more than you could ever imagine. But the person is always trying to get Nobody wants to deal with that person. Nobody wants to be around them. The secret to living is giving. It's what makes you feel alive because you're no longer in scarcity. You're no longer trying to get, and, and no one wants to be around them, but you don't want to be around yourself in that state. How do you get out of it? It's just a habit. It's just like, let me find every day one person to start my day that I can sincerely compliment. Not, no BS, find something good about them. Or someone I could help who's in a worse case than I am. It could be something very little. But when you get in those habits, then all of a sudden life is, you know, like I wake up every day, my whole thing before I came here, before I do anything is like, God use me. You know, it's like, I wanna be a blessing in the life of anybody I meet in some way. Sometimes that blessing is I can take a picture for them and they're excited. Sometimes I can do an intervention. Sometimes I can invite a seminar. Sometimes I can just love on them. Sometimes I ask a great question. But if we're all focused on being a blessing in each other's lives, then our life is filled with blessings because we're, we're not trying to get. All the love you want from others, if you feel inside yourself, you'll be expressing it to others, and every time you express it, you feel alive inside. Otherwise, people can tell you they love you all day long, and you can go, yeah, 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 they don't really love me. You know, I know lots of celebrities who start out wanting so much love, so they become successful and unique, so they get all this adoration, and they don't like their lives now because they don't think it's sincere. I said, you know, your focus is, if you're a celebrity, why don't you use your platform to serve in some way outside what you do? Not attack, but serve. If you do that, you're going to have a rich life. Well, I love you, and thank you very, very uh, much for all you've done for me and Lisa. Tony Robbins, yeah. guru superstar. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new.